Okay, so we're going to talk about cleansing and clearing. Um, for me, cleansing and clearing is separated because, uh, separated by the fact that for me, cleansing is the physical cleaning of the stone. Clearing is the energetic cleaning of the stone. So I'm going to show you a few different techniques on how you can do cleansing and clearing. Um, first thing I'm going to do is step out of the frame and actually do some close-ups on a few of the uh, few of the systems I have going here. So you can cleanse with water, you can cleanse with salt, sand, earth, grains, herbs, sunlight. You want to be careful when you're cleansing that you're aware of the chemical makeup of your stone. For example, you don't want to put selenite in water, nor do you want to put it in salt. You probably don't want to put it in sand, and unless you have really soft dirt, you probably don't want to put it in dirt. However, you can put it in some softer grains or some softer herbs. What I've done here is I've put rose quartz, which I think we might be able to see here, this lovely piece of rose quartz, and this is rosebuds. So I'm putting rose quartz out in these rosebuds to help kind of clear it. Um, I can put rose quartz under water. I'm choosing not to just for this example. Normally I would. You can cleanse stones with water. This is a piece of chrysoprase with tourmaline in it, and I am starting its cleansing process in a water soak. You can cleanse with sand. So here I have a piece of chalco pyrite, and it's in some Lake Superior sand, which is one of my favorite earths to use. You can also use salt. I like to use um, Himalayan sea salt more than I do like a fine salt, but um, just about any salt will do. It'll be okay. This is a dog tooth calcite, so I'm setting it in this salt to kind of help clean it up. Um, and then sunlight is another option. You see I have a little piece of carnelian over here. It's on a mirror to help reflect the light. That can work well for either sunlight or moonlight. You can either position it to catch both, or you can just position it during the daytime to catch the sunlight, or you can position it for specific moon cycles to catch the moonlight. Uh, you can also use a crystal, or a crystal cluster, which is what this is, and you can place another stone inside of it to help clean, cleanse it that way. A technique that you can use as well for doing cleansing and clearing as an active process. Go to your happy little sink. You want to use cool water when you do this. And you take a stone, again, make sure it's a stone that's okay with water. And you just physically want to actually bathe it. Let it run under that cool water. While you're letting it run under that cool water, what you're doing is you're also visualizing that cool water washing off not just the grime, but washing off all of the energies that you really don't want that aren't going to help serve your purposes. So what we would call negative energies. This is the energies that come from the pure mining of the stone, from the handling of the stone, from previous owners. Could be anything. So you let it run under that water for a while. Now, once you've got it cleaned like this, you know, it's all cleansed, clean, then you want to clear it and you want to imbue it with white light. Now, some people have a hard time with visualization. For those who have a hard time with visualization, Find yourself an LED flashlight. It's a nice pure white light. Shine that flashlight right on your stone. You actually see white light coming into your stone at that point. You can visualize with that white light and send intention with that white light for clearing that stone to prepare it for its programming. And here now we have a happy little amethyst. It's all ready to sit. Right there. Now for clearing, when you want to clear your stone and prepare it for intention, you can use breath or air or smoke. You can use sound. You can use fire. You could use Reiki or other forms of energy. You can use intention. You can use other crystals. And you can use moonlight or white light. Some of these techniques are interchangeable. For example, I know you just saw me use a crystal for some uh, cleansing. Some of these techniques are interchangeable. Go with your gut. See what feels best for you. If you want to use fire, you can take your stone. This is an Oro, Oro, Oro Verde <laughs> tongue twister for me today. 
and you literally just pass that stone through fire, just right over the top. You don't want to burn yourself. You're not trying to set the stone on fire. You're just letting that heat touch it just a little bit, okay? Same thing with smoke. You can either smudge it. Most people know how to use a sage smudge or an incense smudge. Here I'm using an incense. And again, you just want to pass it through that smoke and allow that smoke to kind of clear out all the rest of the energy and just bring it back down to ground zero. Nice, clear base. You can use air or breath once you've cleansed it, literally. Just blowing on it, giving it intention. You can use sound. And it's just real simple. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a big drawn out process. The idea here is that you want to work with the cleanest stone possible, the clearest stone possible, so that you can program it for its highest and best intentions, so that the work that it does is for the highest and best for whomever it's working for. Thanks.